everybody, it's Maria, and today I'm going to talk to you about the books that I read this month uh, and the ones that I'm kind of halfway through and why, uh, and just the general reading experience that surrounded it. And maybe you'll have thoughts about any of it. <laughs> I'm still working through it. Okay, backstory. Uh, about a week and a half ago, my husband and I went to San Francisco to visit my brother-in-law and his fiance, and we had a really great time. Got to see some wineries. Uh, we hike around the Redwoods a little bit. Uh, it was just really, really nice to even just have grown up um, time alone with my husband uh, without kids around. And anybody who is a reader knows that you kind of carefully select whatever you're planning on reading on vacation. And because I also enjoy traveling, I try not to pack a whole ton. So I was really, really like mindful, super proud of how well I packed this time. Uh, I did a lot of mixing and matching of outfits. Uh, I packed uh, one book, like hard book, not hardcover, but a book that I wanted to bring, East of Eden. Any of you who know, know that I like John Steinbeck, and I've been meaning to get to East of Eden. I keep picking it up and then not finishing it, and so I thought this is definitely going to be my chance. So I grabbed that one. It's an old copy, used copy, because I think Steinbeck should be old and used and battered because Steinbeck. And then I also downloaded several onto my Kindle Paperwhite. So I was all ready to go, uh, had my art supplies, had my travel sketchbook, super pumped about my grown up vacation. On the flight out there, oh, and also I had to uh, drop off my kids uh, with my mother-in-law who's not quite moved yet. So I knew I was gonna have about five hours in a vehicle that I could listen to an audiobook. So downloaded an audiobook, American Marriage by Tiari Jones. Phenomenal book. Can't wait to talk about that. And I'll get to that in a second. Download my audiobook. So I knew I was going to have plenty of options on the flight, on the car ride, uh, reading in the morning before everybody woke up because uh, people without kids don't sleep or they, they, they sleep in way longer. I don't even know how it's possible, but they do. So I was all ready to go. <sighs> then about like two days before our vacation was over, we were on a hike in the Redwoods at a state park and somebody smashed through our car rental window, took my purse and the contents with it and stole it. So I already feel a lot violated <laughs> on that. Uh, just seeing the car window smash through and then um, glass all over my jean jacket and my purse gone. Now inside my purse, it was actually kind of funny because I had uploaded a video that I planned on um, making public about what's in my bag. Well, no, no longer is any of that stuff in my bag. It's somewhere. Um, but I had my Kindle paper white. I had my travel sketchbook that I've had for the last three years or so. My favorite art supplies. I had my Bluetooth headphones that I was listening to my audiobook with, uh, as well as my podcasts. Um, obviously all my cards, my library card, which I ended up crying over because I have the numbers memorized. And it was just like the last straw. Uh, my East of Eden book that I had carefully selected and packed away uh, with all of my notes in it as well. <laughs> I was just beyond upset. Because, uh, I mean, everybody feels upset anyway. But these the, the things that I was most upset about are the sentimental things that I cannot replace as well as like all my notes that I'd carefully put in my Kindle paper white on the books that I was reading and the the notes that I'd put in my East of Eden. It just felt like a huge violation on a lot of levels. So now I am in the middle of a no buy year for non-essentials. I guess I'm in month seven. Is that right? I'm coming up on seven or eight months of not buying non-essentials, which is kind of a big deal. Uh, my husband did give me a free pass to replace whatever I wanted. Uh, I did not actually, I went through all of my backup art supplies and I had extras of everything um, stored up so I didn't have to purchase any art supplies. I still have not figured out, I don't think I'm going to replace my travel sketchbook. I'm just going to use an extra book that I had available already. But my East of Eden copy, um, my little stupid, I got it for like, two dollars at half price book um I think I'm gonna replace that because it's been about two weeks now and I just can't stop thinking about how I want that particular version old like 60s cover on it um so I can mark it up again and I'm already getting like emotional thinking about it anyway <laughs> 
I have still not finished East of Eden and um, it's just frustrating to me. Anyway, this is a big rant on why people should not steal and how emotional books become to you. Um, I had already finished Annihilation on my Kindle Paperwhite by Jeff Vandermeer. Annihilation was a great book to read before going to California and seeing all of the trees and everything because it feels so overgrown and you can imagine that you're kind of walking through this uh, weird, I don't know, universe where everything's just you're little and all the trees are big is how I felt about Annihilation. Um, Annihilation is the first of a Southern Reach trilogy, I think. Uh, it has been made into a movie I plan on seeing uh, and I think I will continue on with the series. I'm not a huge series reader. But I think Annihilation gripped me enough. I would love to share with you several of the quotes <laughs> that I thought were really interesting. But I can't because they're on my paper white that I don't have available. And I didn't have a chance to copy them down into my notebook yet. Which I wouldn't have anyway because that was also taken. So, anyway. Annihilation was a great book. I really appreciated how they talked about... Uh, what's real, what's not real. Uh, I don't want to say too much. Basically, there's um, a group of scientists who have been sent to this area that the government wants them to go explore. They don't have very much information about each other, about the mission, about anything. And they there's been several expeditions before. And so they come across these things that they have to be very careful about how they describe to one another because they don't want to taint each other's impressions. Um, is a very interesting book, and I probably will do a whole trilogy whenever I finish the trilogy, um, talk about it. But Annihilation, if you like kind of a sci-fi, science-y kind of book, I would recommend it. I read it alongside of Lab Girl, which I still need to finish because, again, can't finish it yet. Uh, I did put it on hold at the library again. But Lab Girl is a story about, it's a memoir of a scientist who also studies, uh, does different experiments. Uh, she takes samples from nature. And so it was very interesting reading that alongside of Annihilation. So if you like pairing books, I think it's a really good pairing because it makes you feel like you know the science behind it a little bit while you're also exploring the mystique behind overgrown nature that humans don't necessarily have control over. So, yes. <laughs> and then American Marriage, Tayari uh, Jones wrote this incredible, incredible book. It's told epistolary style, style with letters. I listened to it on audio and I really, really recommend it. Thankfully, it was on audio on my phone, which was not taken. So I was able to finish that one. It was five star read for me, probably one of the best books I've read in a few months. Uh, I was blown away by how well the story was told. Uh, I looked up several interviews with Cherry Jones where she talks about the inspiration behind the book and she talks about how she was at the mall and she overheard a very well dressed woman talking to not a very well dressed man and, he, and she just said, well, you wouldn't have waited for me for five years either. Uh, it wasn't my fault. And she just kind of took that conversation and spun it into this beautiful tale of what marriage is and isn't, what choices are and aren't. Uh, she kind of takes the idea of, in a lot of books, it's characters making choices and what characters uh, do determine their own destiny. In American Marriage, the choices are made for the characters and they have to figure out what to do with those choices then. And it was so good. If you are a social justice justice um, nerd like me, uh, if you like Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson, if you've been interested at all in the injustice and uh, different races, incarceration, I really think you need to pick up this novel because it takes all of those and it puts them into a story form that you care for all the characters. Um, None of the characters are perfect by any means, which I really appreciated. Uh, you keep asking yourself, what would I do in those situations if I were so-and-so? Whose team am I on? And you realize you're not on anybody's team. You just are so frustrated that they're having to make these decisions. And you're wondering about the what-ifs would have happened if these choices weren't made for these people. It's about a man who's wrongfully accused, uh, sent to jail, and then he and his 
new wife now have to figure out what to do with that information and that 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 situation it was just so riveting I did not want to put it down if it was a thousand pages I would have read it which says a lot for me because I'm not a big book person in general uh, and it was really great on audio the narrators did a phenomenal job so if you're interested in audiobooks this is a good one to pick up uh, yeah, so that is what I have finished reading or almost finished reading. Um, I have a couple other ones that I'm working on. Perfect Union by Dolly Madison. I'm about a third of the way through this one. Good book so far. Uh, Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie. This is the book that my husband gracefully, he, he, he was awesome. Uh, he gave me some money to go pick out a book at the, um, the used bookstore that we uh, walked past just so I had something for the plane um, and I, I haven't finished reading it at all I haven't picked it up since the plane just because I still feel that emotional ugh, from from everything it's a good book it's the Flavia 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 de Luce um, series by Ellen Bradley uh, sweetness at the bottom of the pie everybody's raved about it it's a good book so far I think I just have too many emotions <laughs> and then the other one that I'm partway through is tough mothers by Jason Porath this would make a phenomenal Mother's Day present for any mom you know, including myself. But it is the same as the Rejected Princesses. So they have beautiful illustrations about historical mothers in history. And um, yeah, this is a great book. I've enjoyed thumbing through it. It was one of the things I did um, to kind of reset myself. I was to do a big library trip. So that is all for me now. Uh, I would love to know in the comments, do you have emotional blocks on books because of experiences wrapped up in them? What do you do with that? Do you move forward? I definitely, definitely want to read East of Eden and I want to finish Lab Girl. Um, East of Eden was the one that really angered me because of how I feel about John Steinbeck and I just didn't want any negative feelings associated with John Steinbeck. <laughs> but this person... Yes. So what do you recommend for me to get through this like emotional upheaval of bookish feelings? I would love that. Uh, in the comments below, do you have any thoughts on any of these books? What did you think about Annihilation? Are there any quotes that you really enjoyed from there that you actually wrote down? I would love to know any of these thoughts in the comments below. I will talk to you all later. Bye.